my folks. This is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today is the second in my new series Back to Basics about the very basics of quilling shapes. So today we're going to be covering a few things. I'm going to be demonstrating the loose coil, the teardrop, and the marquee shape and then the modifications for both of those. And for all of those shapes I'm going to be showing them in this pale yellow but all the shapes will be uh, able to be done nicely in any size paper you have. For tools, again, it's your choice. You can use a needle tool. You can use uh, a tool that has both if you can't decide. I'm going to be using my Savvy Slotted tool again. It is a bit easier on the wrist and it also has a really small slotted end so it won't make too much of a crimp in my paper. I am just using Elmer's Glue All in my needle nose container, but any glue you like will work for any of these shapes. I also have a cork board here covered in parchment paper. We don't need that for this project, but it's always a good idea to have if you're building different kinds of shapes together. And then I did want to pull out my circle template here. Uh, we'll go over that in a little bit of detail later. You don't see it very often on my videos, and I'll talk about why when the time comes. So first, just like in my last video about tight coils, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations and then showing some ways that you can use these shapes. To start off, I'm going to be tearing the edges of my paper. Because torn edges and quilling always work the best, it makes a nice smooth edge when you glue the end down. And I'm just taking about half a strip of this 17 inch paper and again, this is just for demonstration purposes, so I don't have a specific project I'm making with this. Now I put one end in my slotted tool and I am slowly just rolling it up, trying to keep it as even as possible. Uh, sometimes I get questions about why are my coils popping out of the center? And that might just have to do with the fact that it might just be being rolled in a, a slightly uh, crooked way. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm being overly cautious right now. I would never uh, go quite this slowly, but I just wanted to show it, you know, it still doesn't take very long if you're very careful. And then when I take it off my tool, I like to kind of flatten it out with my fingers. And I prefer the method of slowly opening it up in my hands. I like to control it that way. I like that it helps me keep my eye in the center. Notice I keep pinching it with my left hand there to make sure that that center eye is staying right in the middle as much as I can anyway. And then once I get it the size I like, I glue the end down. Now because I'm letting this open up in my hands a little bit, I do tend to get more layers on the outside. I like that look personally. Some people I know prefer it to be even all the way across. And I feel that those people, uh, those crafters have better luck with the template board that I'm going to show now. So same idea, so this is the same size paper, roll it all up end to end, try to keep it as straight as you can on your tool. And once this gets to the end, we will do the same thing, take it off the tool but then instead of opening it up in my hands, I'm going to put it in one of the circles on this template board here that's going to correspond with the size that I want it to end up. So the longer your strips are, you would probably aim for the bigger circles. The shorter your strip is, you would be trying for a smaller circle. So we're looking at about here. And then you kind of just put it in there and let it do its thing. It, the white part is uh, elevated just enough to stop the coil from flying out into nowhere. And now I've seen people do this either way is sometimes they glue it while it's in the template. Sometimes you take it out and glue it while it's in your hand. To be honest, and again, this varies crafter to crafter. I know a lot of people love this board. I find that I just like 
something always gets bent. Anytime I'm trying to take it out, I've tried using my needle tool. I've tried just being very gentle. I always end up bending part of my coil. So even though it might open up a little bit more evenly, for me, it's just, it takes longer. I don't like hassling with it. I don't prefer it. Now, quickly, I am going to make some more loose coils from different widths of quilling paper. The first two that I paint there is with the 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter quilling paper strips, which you'll probably be using most often. This is a very wide quilling strip. This is what you would see maybe in more modern work. Uh, and I also have really, really skinny 1 16 inch wide quilling paper or uh, 2 millimeter quilling paper. They're all going to be made more or less the same way. You're going to use the tool of your choice and you're going to wind it carefully to make sure that it stays as even as possible. And then you're going to take it off your tool and let it open up whatever way you wish. And I just want to mention one other note about uh, when coils open up into a loose coil. Like I said, I prefer to use my hand, so that's what I'm doing here. I do understand that sometimes you can get a more uniform coil using a, a template. I will note as well while I'm talking about it, that would not work as well for the really skinny strips. It, you're really gonna mangle them when you take them out of the template, so beware. Uh, but as for me, I probably use the loose coil the least often out of any quilling shapes that I do. I, I always take these loose coils and just like we're gonna do in the next step, I turn them into something else. I turn them into teardrops or marquee or half moons that are gonna be in another video down the road. And when you do that, you're not gonna notice any variation in the layers if they don't look as even as you'd like. So I just don't want you to beat yourself up over the layers in your loose coils. So moving on, here are some very, very simple flower shapes. I made the center with the tight coil from last week and then just five loose coils of the same size all around. Three different widths of paper, they're all the same flower. Another thing you could do with a loose coil is make this Queen Anne's lace. The only difference there, I crimped the paper. The uh, edge on this apple here. There's a few teardrops, but most of this is made with loose coils. They're not all perfect, but that's okay. When you put them together, the effect kind of overrides the individual details. So again, like I said, I don't use loose coils on their own too often, but there's a couple of projects I've shown in the past where you could use them. Now we're going to move on to the teardrop, which I think is a very, very useful tool. To do that, you start with a loose coil. I like to hold the center in my left hand because I'm right-handed. You can flip it if you need to. I find the edge where I glued and I just pinch that side right up to the edge. I like that it hides the seam very easily. And that's what you're left with. Super simple. It's just one pinch on the side. And like I said, I hold the center because it keeps the eye where I want it. Now we're gonna do the same thing but a variation. So holding the eye in one hand, pinching one side right at the seam, and then I'm just gonna curve it over my finger, and that's gonna make a curved teardrop. You can also, if you don't wanna use your finger, you can use a quilling tool or a pen or anything that has a rounded base and just Curve it around there as well. You don't want to smush the eye too much. It's really just that one pointed end. There's your two example of teardrops. Now for some projects that use teardrops, I have a whole bunch. First off, these scallop shells from last summer. Those are just really long and skinny teardrops with a coil right underneath to hold it all together. We also have just some really simple flower buds. These are three teardrops that are then sort of wrapped in a little 3D cup to make it look like they're blooming out of there. Very, very simple. If you can make teardrops, you can handle that. Here is a, a holiday craft from last Christmas season. These are just little twinkle lights on a gift card or a gift tag. 
and then also this snowy tree from last Christmas. Same thing. These are all just uh, some teardrops. There are some squares there, but I demonstrate those in the video. I haven't made a back to basics for the square yet, but they're very, very simple. Here are some chamomile flowers. Now these I used that 3 8 wide paper, that, that wider paper that I showed earlier. It has some teardrops, it has some beehive quilling, but again, I demonstrate all that in the video. And then we have some Lily of the Valley as well. These are just some curved teardrops. I will be linking every single one of these videos in the description box for this video, so don't worry about missing any of that. And then here's also some heart balloons and the bow, all teardrops. You can do any of these things, any of the other details that aren't teardrops, like I said, I demonstrate it all in the video. So even if you're just a very, very beginner, I promise you can handle any of those. And now onto the last shape for this video. This is gonna be the marquee. Again, it's starting off with a loose coil. Make it however you wish. You're going to seal the end. And this time, instead of pinching one side, we are going to pinch both sides. And you can either do this at the same time or you can do one at a time. I like to do one at a time so that I can still hold my eye right in the center. And you do want to be careful that you don't crease the top and the bottom because that's going to end up being a diamond and that's not what you're looking for. It's very easy to do. It's a very subtle change. But there is your marquee. And then just like the curved teardrop, we have a curved marquee as well. So you're going to start off the same way, a pinch on either side, and then holding both sides at the same time, you're going to put one hand up and one hand down. And that's going to make sort of that S shape there. You're just bending it around your fingers. If you want to exaggerate that a little bit more, just like before with the teardrop, you can wrap both sides around a tool of some sort. Just make sure that you're flipping them to do the opposite direction each time. And I wanna mention, just like before, when I was talking about how if your center isn't perfect, it will all get lost when you start forming the shapes, both of those coils were not great. And in both of them, when I started pinching them, it all works out. So here is a little tiny crab with a bunch of marquee. The legs are uh, actually just half moons, but again, I will show all that in the video. Here is some wheat. This is a project from a very, very long time ago. But those are just some marquee. And then I have also here I have these black eyed Susans, which aren't actually marquee, but they are close uh, to that shape. So if you wanted to substitute the kind of oval shape that I made there for the marquee in that video, that would work just fine. And then also here, snowflakes sometimes have a lot of marquee in them. And that is what is happening here. Very simple. The snowflake also does have some teardrops and some loose coils and some tight coils. So you'll get the whole gambit of things that we've been talking about over the last few weeks. So I hope this helped clear up some questions about making the basics of quilling, the loose coil, the teardrop and the marquee. If you have any questions, please, by all means, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. I will leave links to all the projects that I showed here in addition to any supplies I used in the description box. You'll also find there a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can check out some quilling extras in addition to another video that you can see and anything donated or bought on that page really helps the channel keep growing. So I always truly appreciate that. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be around for my next video and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.